Slipped capital femoral apophysis typically occurs in obese adolescents. However, they may also be tall and thin. Blood tests such as metabolic panel, thyroid function tests, and pituitary hormones should be obtained if there are features suggestive of an underlying disorder. Patients may present with an acute onset of severe pain, but more commonly they experience a chronic limp and a dull and aching pain in the groin. The location of the pain is variable. For example, some patients only experience pain in the thigh or knee. These areas would not be tender on palpation though. The pain is worsened with activity, causing some patients to limit their participation in physical activities. And although there is usually no history of a preceding injury, minor trauma may bring attention to the hip and the underlying condition. In addition to limited range of motion, there may be obligatory external rotation of the leg when the hip is actively being flexed. Other findings include an ontologic gait with the affected leg turned outward, that is externally rotated, or a Trendelenburg gait in chronic cases. Atrophy of the thigh and buttocks muscles may occur with this use, but is a less conspicuous finding in obese patients. Anterior, posterior, and lateral radiographs should be ordered for both hips for the sake of comparison and because both hips are often affected. While the femoral head will be appropriately positioned within the sedobilum, it will appear to be displaced in relation to the femoral neck. While plain radiography is positive in most cases, a normal x-ray does not rule out the condition. In order to prevent further slippage, the child must be made non-weight bearing and urgently referred to an orthopedist. Immediate internal fixation using a single cannulated screw is the mainstay of treatment. Many patients with only one hip affected eventually develop the condition in the contralateral hip. Those who do not receive prophylactic fixation should be followed closely until they reach their final height.